Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we're going to have a look at the Alpha 11 patch for Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It just came out and it introduces a whole bunch of stuff for the British. Um, for starters, we're going to have a uh, look at the patch and then I'll show you what we can actually expect for changes in gameplay. New hulls, um, allowing for the King George the Fifth class battleship, uh, British modern battleship 2 hull. Let's have a look at that. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at those. All the way to 1940. No, I don't want a torpedo boat. Yeah, yeah, fine. Constructor took a little bit longer to load. This is interesting. Uh, that's the modern bottle ship 2 hull. The British were sorely missing one of the larger hulls. The biggest that they had was the N3 G3 class. And especially when you were doing 1940 scenarios, the British tended to only field something like this if they didn't pick something smaller. Now they also have the modern battleship 1 hull and the modern battleship 2 hull. Maximum displacement 75,500 tons, which compared to the Germans, the Italians, the Japanese, it's still fairly small. We also have a new, uh, I think the super battle cruiser is new. Yeah, the super battle cruiser is a new hull. Uh, the British modernized battle cruiser. That thing looks really sleek. 125 hull form. Okay, that thing is really sleek. Now, the British modernized battle cruiser, uh, between 40,000 and 53,000 tons, available after 1935, which can produce a speculative improved versions of HMS Hood. So, that's the plan for that particular hull. We also have a new British large cruiser hull, a uh, variant which displaces between 30,000 and uh, sorry, 30,500 tons and 36,000 tons, available after 1925. Low freeboard can produce ships which combine speed, stealth, and decent firepower. Now, to be fair, I haven't really seen concealment and stealth being a very important factor in this game, so I'm not really sure how much that is actually going to change in the sense of actual gameplay. We also have the Heavy Cruisers uh, 3, 2, and 1 hulls. Heavy Cruiser 3 also looks like a really sleek thing. 109 hull form. For those of you who don't know what hull form is, it allows your ship to move through the water easier, and that means higher speeds for less engine power. It usually also means that the ship is longer relative to her width, and that usually means a worse turning circle. Currently, we're looking at a heavy cruiser with a turning circle of 770 meters. Of course, you can amp that a bit by going with uh, improved propeller shaft and an auxiliary engine. But still, you're looking at a heavy cruiser which has a turning circle of 764 meters. So sure enough, you won't be needing a ton of horsepower in order to drive this thing. But the downside is you'll be not very agile. Okay, that's the British. Um, we have a couple of new things for the Spanish. Let's see, the Spanish Empire, um, available after 1906 and 1925. So I'm going to go back to 1926 and hope that the other one isn't outdated yet. This is the Spanish Small Dreadnought. Um, no, hold on. Spanish Heavy Cruiser 2. That's what I should be looking at. But... Available after 1925. I am in 1925. Where's the Heavy Cruiser 2? It's not the modernized cruiser, that's a light cruiser hull. I'm not sure where the Spanish Heavy Cruiser 2 is. Oh, herp a derp. Here. It's right there, staring in my face. Uh, displacement between 18,500 tons, 21,500. Type of hull is a hybrid between a modern battle cruiser and a heavy cruiser. Can produce quite a strong ship at an affordable cost. You can see that affordable cost sort of implies that they're still working on the campaign. And I believe that that is their next patch, or at least I hope so. Um, I know that the game has gotten a fair bit of criticism for not being released yet. Well... As the game says, both in the game itself, alpha, and as it says on the website, you are buying into an alpha release of the game. And credit where credit is due. Um, yes, the game has some bugs, but it's a hell of a lot more playable than some of the other early access games which are out there. 
And if it's an alpha version of the game, don't go complaining that the campaign isn't there yet. If you feel like you need to wait for that, then by all means, just don't buy the game yet and wait for the campaign to actually join into the game. Let's see, um, we also have an armored cruiser variant, displacement 8,000 and 10,500 tons, but, uh, available after 1903 for Italy and China. So let's say we're gonna have a look at 1905. Oh yeah, okay, you don't have any, hover, any uh, battle cruisers, not invented here. So we got a new armored cruiser hull. That must be the armored cruiser four. Huh. These things still have a lot of superstructure. These things are perfectly flat. Interesting. Also, um, improvement in late Spanish cruisers with new parts and hull fixes. Very nice. Uh, late Spanish cruisers. So we're going back to the Spanish and we're gonna have a look at 19, 1935. Now, what sort of new parts can we expect? That tower looks a bit different, I think. Damn, you can put the tower really far forward. Can you even fit a gun in there? No, not really. Okay. I'm not sure if this is a new part. This is, this looks familiar. Secondary tower. See, the, the patch notes don't outline what new parts there are. New parts and hull fixes. I don't think that we had this tower, but it's hard to be sure. Secondary guns, eight inch triples look very normal. Six inch, main guns, barbettes, just the same list as always. So maybe they added a new tower because for the rest of it, I don't really see any differences. New towers and other parts for several older hull types. Okay, so we'll come across those eventually. Movements, okay. This means various new gun models for the British late tax. Okay, let's go back to the Brits. What sort of guns do you have available? At least, I mean, they have probably the same type of gun available, but it might be a different model. That's a 20 quad. Um, let's say an 18 dual. Not really too impressed. Note, by the way, how many slots there are. And that's not even counting all of them because you can still put them outside of that line. I wonder how much you can adjust this. Oh, that's a beautiful tower, by the way. The advanced tower four. Lots of search lights. What are they holding in there? Scout planes? Maybe? Not that they're a factor in the game, but I imagine that these look like hangars and thus would house some sort of aircraft. Anyway, um, I believe that they also changed a part which said how far you can put stuff back. Uh, let me go with the secondary tower, put that all the way over there. Main tower all the way over here, there. That is a hell of a lot of weight on the bow. This is the maximum displacement for that new uh, battleship two hull. Look at that. Oh, error for mount two. Yeah, I guess the main tower got in the way a bit. Okay, so if I would want to have this thing here, then the advanced tower here, that can still house a lot of turrets. How many could we put on here? Oh, that's nice. Whether it's useful is debatable. But what? Huh. That's neat. That gives you quite a lot of options. Anyway, um, let's say that you want to build a super heavy battleship for the Brits, which is gonna have 18 inch triple guns. One, two. Meet the Super Nelson, 18 inch guns, 
three triple setups. And of course, you could put one, if not multiple, on barbettes and allow for even more flexibility. You'd probably need the, I think, the huge one. You can still have super firing turrets like that. Of course, this one is a bit problematic. Um, I don't think I can put a barbette that... What? Oh, okay. I was under the impression that you could not put a barbette this far forward. Actually... I... Am I breaking the game again? Because I think that the barbette now implies that there can be another turret in front of it. The game goes, okay, you got a barbette, so we can put another gun in front. Right. Jesus, this opens up a whole lot of new crazy designs. Because if you can put a barbette this far forward, then you can build all sorts of weird shit. Look at that, it says no mounts, but the game doesn't care about that. You can just put a barbette all the way over there. This is glorious. This is going to allow for all sorts of fun stuff. So get your thinking caps on because we can build all sorts of crazy designs now. Anyway, um, we have a couple of new guns for the French. Let's have a look at the French. Because they have quadruple 13-inch guns. That's interesting. They're the only nation who have that. <laughs> They look tiny on this huge hull. This is the French Super Battleship 2. Uh, There's not even the maximum size it can get to. Oh, yes, it is. Never mind. So, for the French... Can we put the secondary down here? No. Ideally, you'd want this tower because it's slightly better for long-range accuracy. That's a really weird place to put your lifeboats. <laughs> Yeah, right. We're going to put the lifeboats on the barbette. Let's do that. <laughs> Get off. Um, no, this one doesn't quite allow it. Sight-mounted barbettes are not a thing. <laughs> How many barbettes would you like? Yes, all of them. Oh, this is going to allow for a huge amount of secondary guns. Actually, no, not just that. Ah, oh, the 14s are too big. Okay, 13s. Too big still. Let's say I would want to go for secondaries. I'll get to this in a second. Wow, they don't fit because they're too close together. Fine. Let's give you a bit more room. Good lord. <laughs> oh, I think this should be the thumbnail right here. <laughs> I find this stuff amusing. Anyway, um, quadruple 13-inch guns only available to the French. Excellent. Quadruple secondary guns, 2, 3, and 4-inch for the French. So these boys now have quadruple 2-inch, quadruple 3-inch, and quadruple 4-inch, and they're apparently the only nation who get this. I imagine that they're not going to be terribly accurate, because you're firing four of these almost simultaneously. So let's say I want to have uh, an analysis between the 4s and the 3s. These have a rate of fire of 11.2, or reload. This is 12.5. It's not that bad. Accuracy at 1,000 meters is 72, versus 65. We're going to add just all of them here. Uh, 76 and 76 still. It's just this one reloads faster compared to this one. I mean, of course it does. Uh, aside from that, the accuracy between the 1 and the 2 are same. 2 to 3 is slightly worse. 3 to 4 is also slightly worse. So that is a new upgrade for the French. What else do we have? Uh, ship design improvements and fixes. Fixed an old bug, which sometimes caused the AI to design ships with unoccupied barbettes or place very small guns on huge barbettes. Yeah, I've seen my fair share of that. It looks amusing, but it's not necessarily useful. New feature that stops you placing secondary towers or funnels in front of main towers. I guess that they might have seen that video where I had a French ship, I think it was, 
that had a funnel in front of the bridge. Uh, that's a great way to get very salty and also very smoky sailors. But of course, it's never supposed to be designed like that. Increase the flexibility for all mount types. Well, I guess we figured that out with the barbettes. Um, for every hull, you will notice much larger freedom in placing various ship parts. Moreover, you can override the mount snaps by pressing the control button so you can add the parts, towers, funnels, barbettes, etc. in a continuous area between the allowed spaces. Armor and bulkhead weight rebalance. Oh yeah. Meh. Not that bad. Um, ships with maximum bulkheads will weigh more. Ships with minimum bulkheads will weigh slightly less, so the trade-off between bulkhead protection and other ship assets will be more pronounced. Guns mounted in free mode are now placed proper forward-rear alignment according to position instead of always facing at the sides. Really? That's nice. Because that's something that I always had to do manually. I always had to rotate those things. Which got old pretty quick. Yeah, there we go. They now look towards the front and the stern. Like that. Much better. Thank you very much, devs. That's excellent. Fixed uh, various issues with boat decor. Boats overlapping with other parts. And enrich the areas where boats can appear on deck and ship parts. Yeah, on a barbette, for example. Various auto design improvements aid the AI to build successful ship designs consistently. Um, I'm a bit skeptical because I've seen something like that before and I've also seen some really curious designs. Further AI improvement makes ships makes AI ships to keep a more efficient no more effective firing distance at all circumstances. okay? Fixed issue where which caused ships on scout/ screen mode to fight at very large extreme range causing them to stall their movement too often. Thank you. This should, if it works, make larger battles accessible once more. Because far too often the game just had ships which were in the screen slash follow command. Uh, sorry, screen slash scout command. They just didn't go anywhere. It got really frustrating. There is also a new mission. And that's going to be the next part of this video. Enforce the British rule. I'll get to that in a second. Other changes. Uh, improved gun splash dispersion at close range. Shells that should miss, that shells that miss should not fly so wide against targets as before. Yeah, if let's say you were targeting this ship from I don't know two kilometer range, you could see splashes somewhere over there. It was ridiculous, and I'm glad that they fixed that. Various text fixes for loading screens, removed naval academy difficulty options. They weren't working anyway. Uh, I think there were a remnant, or they were something that they were working on, but apparently that has been uh, fridged for a while. Repaired, repaired graphics issues at lowest setting, fast and fastest, that made visual completely broken and also caused torpedo trails to be not visible. I didn't even know that was a factor. Note, due to the many hull fixes and new mount changes or mount mechanics, your previous save designs for Naval Academy will not become functional. So, that is the patch. Let's get to that new mission. Because the new mission is uh, the Enforce the British Rule. Where is it? Here. Germany has prevailed in World War II and has ultimately conquered Europe. France remains a client state and contributes with her naval facilities in the construction of a new, more powerful German navy. Lovely. Although weakened, Britain remains a potent naval force and aims to meet, engage and decisively defeat the growing German fleet. With scarce resources, you are called to build the main force of your fleet, either focusing on battleships or by building more numerous advanced cruisers. Smaller cruisers and destroyers will supplement your attacking fleet. Now, this is good for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I have a fairly sizable fleet of my own, so I can see if that formation bug has been fixed. Two, I can build the new British battleship, or a battle cruiser or a heavy cruiser, um, and I can test out some of those new guns that they supposedly have, as well as the new towers. Time limit, 480 minutes, sink 60% of enemies, uh, which means that if you sink, let's see, 1, 3, 4, 5, uh, 9, 13, 16, Jesus, 28 enemy ships. Okay. If I sink 15 destroyers, 
I'm already approaching that 60%, so I don't necessarily have to kill all their battleships. Uh, keep 45% of allies alive, so my destroyers are also quite valuable. And, well, I wonder if the AI is going to come up with some better designs for me. Equal tax. I will get another 10 million available, so I should have 400 million. Right. Considering that I'm going up against a couple of enemy battleships, I'm going to go with a large battleship of my own. Uh, let's set a speed of about 30 knots. See if that's doable. Range is stuck at medium. I cannot change that. Bulkheads, all of them. Let's go for diesels. Because diesels are a bit cheaper relative to the geared steam turbines. And considering I'm now actually doing a mission where money is an issue, this number, 61 million versus 49 million, is rather important. We're going to go with oil, Krupp 4. It's basically the same setup as I use for most of these modern battleships. Um, it's supposed to be quite advanced because... I will be taking on some fairly sizable and uh, potentially really dangerous German battleships. Super heavy shells. Um, 33,000 tons out of 75,000 tons. That's quite, quite roomy for now. So let's see how I can best fit stuff on this ship. I could try a Super Nelson. Just to see if that's doable. I mean, I know it's it's sort of doable, but is it is it viable? Maybe that should be the question. Is it viable? We'll build three battleships only. Damn, okay. The thing with the Super Nelson is that while it looks nice. The problem is that it does not really bring all of her guns to bear. And that's something that I never quite liked about the Nelson design. So let's go with a more traditional design. Uh, we're going to go with a couple of 18-inch guns, dual barrel. So I need a barbette over there and a barbette over there. Look at all this space. This is so much better. So much better. 18 inch dual. Why dual? Well, because they have a better accuracy than the triple and the quadruple. And considering that I would ideally stay at range, I think that the dual barrel with their improved accuracy is going to be uh, very welcome, shall we say. Yeah, put that over there. Main guns, 18. Dual barrel. One, two. One, two. I will only build two battleships at this rate. Oof. This just goes to show how quickly you can blow through 400 million. I still don't have a funnel. Maybe that's something I should look into. What's my engine efficiency? 31%. <laughs> Go to induced boilers. Thank you. Mega funnel one. Mega Funnel 2. 97. I'll take it. Okay, we still have 16,000 tons left. And we also have a fair amount of sites room over here. Unfortunately, it looks like those British towers are not particularly welcoming to secondary guns. Oh, these look nice. Oh, no, they can house some of them. The spotlights will disappear. Okay, that's good. That's four inch. Do they house five? They do? Well, some of them do. Let's say... Yeah, we're just going to go for more dual barrels. Interesting look on these. Interesting look. I quite like it. Then we're going to put those dual four inch on there, on the other slots. The game feels very slightly laggy when I try to put those things down. Okay, they cannot fit in there. Three inch. No. There are mounting slots there, but I'm not sure for what. Not even the two inch guns want to fit. Or the three inch. Oh, here we go. I shouldn't be looking at those. I should be looking at these. Okay. Back to the secondaries. Yeah, it has to be two inch. Or th it has to be two inch. Okay, fine. 
just as a bit of augmented against DDs, although they only fire out to 6.2. So it's not like these are going to take down a destroyer, or at least not quickly. Put on a couple of 8-inch secondary guns there and here. So now I have defenses against cruisers, destroyers, and light cruisers. Not, not necessarily in that order. All or nothing armor scheme. Um, Anti-flood. Yeah, I think I'm going to need some of that. Barbette armor. We have a slide for weight offset issue, but we'll fix that. Engine shaft one. Reinforced bulkheads two. Well, it fits, but it's getting quite close here. And armor? <laughs> well, let's say that I want to stay at a lot of range with these 18-inch guns. Because this gun platform, she might perform, but she's pretty fragile. Seeing as I don't really have a lot of room for more armor. And I don't really want to go back to anti torp 1. I could go to Anti-Flood 2, but that saves me, what, 200 tons? 400 tons. And if I go back to many bulkheads... Well, that saves me almost 1,900 tons. Okay. But considering the engagement range that I have in mind for this ship, I'm thinking that... Well, deck armor would be great, but I'm not sure if I can make that happen. Because the deck armor, it ramps up so fast. And the real question is, does it really stop anything? Because I don't really think so. Eight and a half inch there. Let's go for more conning tower. Let's say 14 inch. We get 16 inch on the turrets? No, not quite. Go back to 18 there, 14, 15, 17 half. I'm up armoring the conning tower to ensure that that thing doesn't get too damaged so that the guns will stay accurate. Now, as I'm putting on more armor, the balance has shifted slightly. There we go. Okay. Now, I don't quite like the name Agincourt. I'm going to set this as the lion. Let's see if the lion can actually roar and take out, well, the majority of the German Navy. All right, here we go. Two of my battleships versus four of theirs and one battlecruiser of theirs. All right. Um, my heavy cruisers and my battle cruisers. Oh, sorry, my battle cruisers. My heavy cruisers. Diadem, Hampshire, and Galatea. Few bulkheads, 34 knots, 7 inch guns. Ship looks clean. Secondaries were completely forgotten when they decided to build this craft. 7 inch guns can be okay against heavy cruisers. Light cruisers and destroyers are definitely going to feel the wrath. And torpedo launchers. Meh, that's okay. They only drop three. It's not that large of a volume, but I hope it's enough. Light cruisers, Pyramus, Blonde, and Forte. Seven inch guns as well. <laughs> Same level of armament as the heavy cruiser. Except this one uh, has minimum bulkheads. Is slower? Yeah, it's slower. And carries quadruple torpedo launchers, ranging 9.9. .9. Right, so you want me to do a torpedo run at 9 kilometers with a minimum bulkhead ship that only does 30 knots. Okay, that's interesting. Destroyer Zodiac. Zodiac, Scotsman, Sable, and Vendetta. And the AI, in her infinite wisdom, has decided that it would be great to put four different ship classes in one division. Zodiac, 41 knots. Scotsman, same ship class. Sable is 35 knots, and the Vendetta is 41.5 knots, but a different design. Torpedoes, 22.1. These are really nice. And they have another launcher on the bow. Reduced ammo for the torpedoes. Yeah, I suspected as much, because I can only fire two salvos now. Sable. One quintuple torpedo launcher, ranging 
and the Vendetta. Where are your guns? Underwater. Well, I guess we won't need depth charges. We got four inch guns to shoot any submarine. Maybe I should send a bit of a patch or a bug. <laughs> a bug report about that. <laughs> oh well. Every patch has its bugs, and this is one. Interestingly, <laughs> the irony of the name of this ship class and the bug is not lost. Um, then we got the other division. Oh, you're in screening mode, aren't you? Yeah, they are. Lovely. And then we got the loyal, which is loyally following the battleships. Lion and Vengeance. The German battleships... Someone was asking me, by the way, how can you tell what sort of caliber guns they have? It's over here on the left side of the screen. So I can see that they have 3 times 4 16-inch guns, a hell of a lot of 3-inch guns, and some uh, yeah 8-inch guns. I can't quite see them, but I can see them. It's like the game knows some... Oh, there's one. Hello. Yeah, that looks distinctly German. Those turrets... Oh, hold on. You're a different ship class. Right. This one has 10 16-inch guns. Yikes. My battleships are engaging this ship. At this rate, by the way, this is going to turn into a really long video. Because I'm only starting the battle after 30 minutes. Ship design was actually, for my, <laughs> for my way of doing videos, fairly quick. Um, and... Let's see if I can keep the whole video under an hour. Although, if you've been on this channel for a while, you might know that that's not that likely to happen. Loyal join to 5. I hope I have enough ammunition to sink the German battleships. Now, as we have calculated at the start of the battle, or before the start of the battle, it is more valuable to take out the destroyers than it is the battleships. We have ideal another. Yeah, we saw that one. Ooh, interesting. Eight 19 inch guns and two quad turrets. <laughs> what the hell? Well, the AI is definitely taking advantage of having those new barbette systems that you can just put side by side. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then some, I think, eights. This thing has 21 8-inch guns? Cruisers beware. Look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And of course, similar on the other side. So you can give me a broadside of 15 8-inch guns. This thing has more firepower than my heavy cruisers. Okay. Uh, over here we have the 12 16-inch guns. And you have a similar build. But... It seems like this one is either not detecting me or not in range. Interesting. Gives me some options. Now, what is the engagement range, actually? 29 clicks. Okay. I have hit them a few times already. Yeah, that one's down to about 90% structural. Good. Keep it up. I really like the new tower design. At least I hope it's a new tower, otherwise I'm just not recognizing it. But I think this looks really nice. Anyway, times three speed, because we need to ensure that this thing doesn't take hours and hours and hours. I've done 192 versus their 21. Now the real question is, when can we, when can we detect the enemy destroyers? The answer is, I don't quite know. Uh, Sable? Who's leading this? The Zodiac. Oh, there we go. Sable's turning. Now, my plan is absolutely to keep my battleships at this range. Maybe go to 25, if that. 
but I'm really not interested in risking my ships that much. Oh, we found another one. What are you? Heavy cruiser? See, that looks like an actual heavy cruiser. Instead of my ships. This thing has 15 8-inch guns. A couple of 4 and 3 for supports. Torpedo launcher there. Beautiful design. Clean. Probably quite effective as well. Interesting though to have more of the guns on the stern than on the bow. I would probably do that a bit different. Now, um, this division is a bit mismatched. Torpedo wise, 22, 22, 12, 10, and 12. Roger that. Uh, loyal, detach. I want to keep the Scotsman and the Zodiac together, so you can detach, and you can detach. Uh, loyal and Sable are one group, so you can join Div 6. Vendetta is a different ship class. The Mansfield is as well, so you can join Div 7. And we got the Swallow, the Swan, and the Westfall. Okay, what sort of turps do you have? 22. That's the same as you guys, right? Yes. Okay, Swan joined Div 4. Um, Div... You are Div 5. What? You're Div 4. How can you not join Div 4? Swan, detach. We're definitely inflicting a good amount of damage with those 18s. Ooh. So much so that this ship had a flash fire. That's one battleship done for. Excellent. I'm still sorting out my fleet and we've already killed one of their battleships. Well done. Oh, they do return fire and get a nice chunk of damage on the lion. Anyway, um, Swan, you need to join Div 5. That one. No. What? No! Crap! Uh, get the light cruisers out of here. Get the Westfall out of here. Detach. Detach. The Blonde out of here. Pyramus out of here. And the Forte out of here. This is going to get such a mess. Hang on. Right, I think I got it sorted. I now have the light cruisers in a separate group, the heavy cruisers, uh, the DDs of the same ship classes in the same group. So this should work. The plan is to intercept enemy destroyers and potentially torp big ships if and when I get the opportunity. Uh, whether I get the opportunity, of course, remains to be seen. Battleships will continue to engage their battleships. That's how I'm going to fight this fight. I've already done 2.1k damage versus 347 of theirs. I want you guys to join into a normal division. Same for you and same for you. We've hit him once. Overpent on the deck. Okay. Interesting. Now we have a destroyer incoming. The range to my BBs is... 20 clicks ish heavy cruisers move to intercept battleships moving at 23 knots sort of 23 is fine i don't need them to be terribly quick i need them to be very accurate you guys move to intercept your torpedoes can range to 22 kilometers which means that the battleship is just out of range not by much but by just enough that i'm not going to risk launching the torpedo Now, I don't think that this is an actual light cruiser. Nope, that's a destroyer. The destroyer is getting some attention from the heavy cruisers, I suppose. Yeah, the heavy cruisers are fighting. Don't launch your torps against the DD dummies. It's a waste of perfectly good torpedo. Your chances to hit a destroyer are so bad. It's not worth it. The V11. Torpedo range, 14 clicks. 
Zodiac's task force, engage the V-11. Now, where are my destroyers which have the underwater guns? Is that the Vendetta class? Yeah, that's the Vendetta class. Now, the Loyals group has torpedoes which can hit at 12 kilometer range. So they need to be far closer to the enemy than uh, the group of the Zodiac. Zodiac, I need you to slow down, buddy. Because you are not allowing your, your fellow group members to catch up. 26 knots and hold your distance. Heavy cruisers, maintain screening patrol at around 5 clicks away from the ship. 6, fine. Now we so far sunk a battle cruiser, no, a heavy, no, a battleship, thank you very much, and one of their destroyers. There's plenty more to sink. Vendetta, Mansfield, and Swan, you guys are actually lining up, huh? That's neat. Slow down a bit. How about the other guys? That is uh, Loyal, Sable, and Westfall, also lining up. Very good. Very good. This is something that did not go well previously. It always caused issues with the AI just stopping. Much to my frustration. Uh, save on main guns. I don't want to have the main guns fire if they're not likely to hit. Because I don't have that much ammo left. 564 and I still need to sink a couple of battleships. Although destroyer hunting is also a pretty good use of my time. As I need to sink 65... Oh, 65%. How far can those torpedoes get? 14 kilometers. Minimum bulkheads, you're done for. Or at least you should be soon. There's another torpedo salvo. Fires aboard. Loyal using her two and a half inch guns with moderate effect against the V-13. Whoa. I missed one of them. Crap, the Westfall's done for. She ate two torpedoes because I thought that they were gonna be meant for this group. Didn't see that the Westfall was that far behind. That is my mistake. Okay, you guys need to turn a bit, so do you. Light cruisers are still following. Whoa, where the hell are you boys at? Uh-oh. That bug is still not resolved. Because the blonde does not know what she needs to be doing. Watch this. Blonde speed, 1.9 notch. Detach. 4.4. She just instantly starts moving. Joint div, six. V13 is done. Forte, rejoin. Blonde, moving at 10 knots-ish, nine and a half. Okay, that bug is still not fixed. See, this is why I said I was skeptical. Because I have, well, I have faith in the devs, but some of these things are just really persistent. How's the damage here? Oh, I ammo detonated one of their DDs. That's good. Another one is struggling, V9. What the hell? The camera is frozen. 12.7. They still can't hit that far. Vendetta pull back a little. You guys are too exposed. Other DDs? Out there. Excellent. Now you guys have lined up into a nice formation, so we can now speed back up to 36 knots. Let's see if we can cut off one of their battleships. Potentially the whole division, actually. Oh, crap. Loyal and Sable have taken a good bit of flooding. Minimum bulkheads. I need to keep alive 45% of my allies, so 45% of my ships. 
at this rate, that's going to be a challenge. Come on, sink the V9. Target that heavy cruiser. Not sure if they can hit that. It's 26 kilometers out. It's probably tricky for them. What's the range? 10. Oh, you range 9.7. Okay. Charging again. Oh! 16 inch gun hit on the Vendetta. Ouch. Now, are those light cruisers catching up yet? Yeah, well, eventually. It's going to take them a long, long time. Loyal, smoke up. I need that destroyer out of my way. Turn back to port. You are probably subject to a torpedo attack. So I need to ensure that we change course and make ourselves a difficult target. Loyal detected torpedoes. There they are. Sable. Sable should be fine. Look deep. This DD group could be at risk. Turn. V9 is burning again. Minimum bulkheads. Come on, puncture him. Oof, not me. Where are their battleships at? Hold on, I'm going to detach the Loyal here, because I need my ships alive. And at this rate, the Loyal is not going to be that for, well, not too much longer. Zodiac engaging the V9, which is now flooding. Keep pushing. I think this is the battleship group here. Which means that they're 33 kilometers out from my battleships. It's too far. I'm going to have to turn the battleships in. I don't really like doing it, but I think it needs to be done. Otherwise, I cannot shoot them. Even if I could detect them with the DDs, I might not be able to get an accurate firing solution. Come on, V9. Take a hint. There she is. Or at least one of them is. Engage. 3.7. I'll take that. Ah, it's the Nassau. Minimum bulkheads on the Nassau. Are you sure about that? Because that could very easily cause issues. Torpedo range. 12. Fine, we're going to torpedo that heavy cruiser. The Sable is the last surviving member of this destroyer group. So if she can just dump her torpedoes and get out, that'd be great. Is that cruiser heading away? Ah, that's why you're not launching. Okay, the V9 is done. Sable, I'm going to retreat. Too heavily damaged. You can join Div 8. Div 8 is going to be my retreat division. You guys have those 22 kilometer range torps, which puts them in your crosshairs. I know that the Nassau is poorly protected, so that's going to be your torpedo target. The Nassau. Smoke up, because with the Sable out of the action, you're their new tor favorite target. Go aggressive on the torpedoes. Because we are not only targeting the Nassau, everything else that happens to get in the way is fair game. Shit. Flooding. Minimum bulkheads. Zodiac. Could lose the Zodiac here. Scotsman launched. More flooding on Zodiac. Come on. It's not looking good for the Zodiac. Heavy cruisers are getting a little closer and might, might do something against this heavy cruiser here. Maybe. 
Torpedoes away, torpedoes away, torpedoes away. Okay, good. Zodiac. Wait, one. No. Zodiac's done. Shit. How are my battleships doing? Not great. I haven't hit much here. They took off 1% of the A gear, but that's all that they were able to accomplish. Okay, I want you guys to rearm. Just get ready to fire another salvo. I also got this DD div. They're fast at 45, 41 knots. They got a lot of catching up to do. Which at 31 knots, they're not that likely to do. Alright, div 3 holds off your torpedoes. I'm still coming out better. I've done 6,000 versus their 2.5. But considering there are greater numbers, I don't think I can lose as many ships as they can. That's my problem. This one detected torpedoes. The question is, are you clever enough to do something about that? Well, you're trying, but... Yeah, you seem okay. The rest of the group is also being pushed back. That's the York, the Thor. But that's just one of the waves. Here's the second wave, and here's the third. If this could make a couple of holes in the Nassau, that'd be great. But all their battleships already, preemptively, seem to be turning away. Huh. How about that? Your torpedo range is 21. That means that the battleships are currently outside of your reach. Huh. Hitting the Eager. Ammo, 502. Okay, we're good on the ammo. I think I didn't quite get lucky with the heavy cruisers. Because, sure, they can be useful against destroyers and light cruisers. But with minimum or few bulkheads and not a lot of armor, it's risky to field these things far forward not impossible but it does make me hesitant to put them on the front line that other division these I'm going to need you to go in a loose formation and speed all the way up oh you can't Oh, the Vendetta and the Mansfield have taken some damage. Hmm. That's why they're not going faster. Now it makes sense. I didn't see that damage before. They're turning back. These are turning back. Ager is av avoiding the torpedoes, unfortunately for me. I think we just bounced on something. There are a few more out here, but the way that Ager is avoiding, she's perfectly safe. Structural integrity on battleships is fine, though. Range from the heavy cruisers to the heavy cruisers is 16, so from you it's about 20. Yeah, 21.4. Because here's the thing, I don't think I can actually pen. My ricochet chance is too high. Switch to high explosive. It's 18 inch high explosive, so don't count it out just yet. They can still do a lot of damage. Even if they don't fully pen the target. Where are those two missing light cruisers? And Forte still doesn't know what to do. I don't think that those are going to be useful in this whole fight at all. There we go. Mid-deck pen. A-gear. That was high explosive. Interestingly, high explosive did a hell of a lot more than the armor piercing. 
of your cruiser group status? Well, you're under fire. Range 17, torpedo is 21. These guys are just generally too good at avoiding torpedoes. Because they see them arriving very much in advance. That makes it difficult. It's not just the battleships which have the potential to spot torpedoes using their sonar 1. It's also the entire screening force that I have to go through first before I'm even able to land a torpedo on the Aegir. Or, well, whatever else I want to try and hit. Ricochet chance is low. Switch to armor piercing. Nassau, minimum bulkheads. Aegir, many bulkheads. Bayern, many. Yeah, Aegir and Bayern in the same ship class, I think. Pen, flooding. Good hits. I've already took down one of their battleships. I'm eager for a second. Diadem is coming under attack. Here's the problem. These heavy cruisers can't fight. So in order to have these actually be able to push, I'm first going to have to put on the, the battleships, then push my way through the, the heavy cruisers with maybe the 8-inch guns on the battleships. And then, when all that is done, then the heavy cruisers can push in. But that's going to take a while. Because then they can do something against the DDs. Maybe. You know what? Screw it. We're going to launch these torpedoes anyway. I'm not waiting till we can actually hit the battleships. Target V7, target V1, target V8. Aggressive torpedo launch. Torpedoes away, torpedoes away. Galatea. What's your excuse? More flooding. Aegir's end of 58%. My battleships? Still fine. Excellent. Galatea, it's... Oh! <laughs> Ammo detonation. Aegir is done. Well done, that. Now, it was the Nassau that did not have a lot of bulkheads. They also got the Scharnhorst out here. A battle cruiser with 9-inch guns. All right. Interesting. 5-inch guns. 4-inch. 3-inch. What? Hmm. Interesting design. Two inch guns <laughs> and underwater torpedo tubes. See, these can actually be underwater, but this is a submarine defense. Four inch guns deep underwater. Submarine comes close, gets killed off. And it works because there are no submarines in the game, so the defense is perfect. You're not going to get hit by a submarine, regardless of whether you have the torpedoes or the four inch guns underwater or not. Now, that's two of their battleships gone. Uh, it looks like the DDs are currently too far for me to be considering a threat. That's good. I know that I still have some other DDs out here somewhere, but they're pretty heavily damaged. Scotsman. Join Div 6, the Retreat Div. I'm also going to do the same thing with the Swallow. She's just too heavily damaged. So join the Retreat Div, Div 6. Pyramus, still following the battleships. Blonde, don't care, don't care. Swan apparently also took some more damage. Uh, Div 5 now. Div 5. As long as the Vendetta can keep, in, can keep an eye on them, that'd be great. If not, I will retreat her. Because I cannot lose that many ships. Hit on the Nassau. More importantly, flooding on the Nassau. Causing her to start taking on some water, including in one of the engine spaces. Holy shit. She was doing very well, and then she got mauled. Bow belt pen. Bow belt pen. Deck pen. Ammo detonation, stern deck pen, mid belt, over pen. Oh, that's a different target. So the Nassau potentially is sinking. 50% buoyancy, 46. Two damaged engines, so her engine or her pumping capability is reduced. 
28, 26, 24, 19, 15, 8. Sunk. That's their third battleship gone. Now we're going to take out the Scharnhorst. These battleships are doing a lot of work. I've done 11k damage. And about 9k of that 11 was all thanks... All thanks to the battleships. Uh, get out. Oh, you are already retreating. No, you're not. Shit. Same bug. Detach. GTFO. Smoke up. Run away. Oh, we torpedoed one. The heavy cruiser actually hit the destroyer? With a torpedo. Well, that's not something I was expecting to see. And the battle cruiser has already been hit. Scharnhorst and her few bulkheads are half flooded. That was pretty deadly. Now, considering that some of these divisions apparently don't want to fall back... See, the Vendetta can do far more than that. Vendetta, disengage. Oh, you are already single. Never mind. Retreat. Mansfield retreating. Swan retreating. Scotsman. Retreating-ish. See, now you're actually retreating. This guy was retreating alongside the line of the enemy. Now they're all single divs. So that should allow them to actually fall back. Instead of this... Ooh, never mind. Oh, that was my own launch. Instead of this uh, semi-fallback plan. Now, how's Scharnhorst? Not happy. Not happy at all. 30% buoyancy remains. These battleships... It's just a very standard build. ABXY, 18-inch guns. But it just does a lot of damage. Interestingly, the DDs have survived the encounter with the torpedoes. Okay. Did we just hit him again? No. That was an older hit. Range, 22 kilometers. At 20 kilometers, we're getting an accuracy of about 5%. Ammo, 302, 318. Okay, that's fine. Continue closing in. Because that way, the other guns can potentially do something against the DDs. Which are still very numerous. Their battleships and battle cruisers, however, are not. And the Bayern has expended so much of her ammo that she even stopped firing. So that's excellent. Flooding on the V8. Scharnhorst is dead. Next target, Bayern. Killer. Because then we have all of them gone. Ammo to auto, so that I don't accidentally fire armor piercing against the destroyer. Immediately we hit the Bayern. <laughs> Damn. V7 is done. Next target, V8. Yeah, I might as well torp. I might as well torp. Can we pen this? <laughs> this is why I don't like 7-inch guns on my heavy cruisers. 7.5% <laughs> chance to pen. <laughs> yeah, right. And sure enough, we're at a range of 13 clicks, but come on. I would expect a heavy cruiser to be able to pen a heavy cruiser. No such thing. Come on. Nope. Now, once the battle cruiser, or sorry, the battleship is done, I can put these eights and fives to work against other ships. Oh, here's the namesake sister ship of the Sharnhorst. This is the Nyza now, heavy cruiser Nyza now. Interesting. Looks like the destroyers are not torpedoing. Nope. 
Neither are the heavy cruisers, which have run out of ammo. Okay. I'll take it. You know what? That battleship is actually not my biggest concern. The heavy cruiser might be. But the heavy cruiser is probably more difficult to hit at this range. So now we're just plowing through their destroyers. I still have plenty of ammo on these boys. 1300, 1700, 2000. Yeah, we have a lot of ammo. There goes the v V8. Okay. Nice and I detected torpedoes. I'm not sure exactly whose those are, but I think originating at a heavy cruiser. Yeah, now it's pretty much a death spiral for the enemy fleet because they don't have their battleship firing at me, which means my battleships can push in. And they don't really have that much that can counter the battleships effectively. So they are in some rough times. I don't actually have to sink... What? Okay. I don't actually have to sink their battleship. As long as I can sink enough of the rest of them. I would say, however, that I am definitely enforcing the British rule. Switch fire to the hipper. Just humor me. Chance to hit 13%? Already? Okay. That should be good. Because we can probably kill this with one or two hits. Yeah. No. Close. I'm not sure about the pen chance of the 8 inch guns. Two, two, four, two, oh, four. Okay, we still got enough ammo to keep going for a while. It looks like the German fleet is in full retreat now. Yep. That was an 18 inch shell. More flooding. Should have fired high explosive. V1 sinks. So these heavy cruisers, if you wait long enough with them and you engage destroyers, they can still be useful. If you try to do something like try and engage a heavy cruiser, they are useless. Target Nizer now next. So we just blew the Admiral Hipper away with a full 736 damage of high explosive pen. One's going to go after the Nizer now, the other one's going to go after the Hipper. <laughs> Still some <laughs> torpedoes in transit here. Come on, we're just mopping up at this point. Shouldn't take that long. Not with 18 inch guns. There we go. That's 1016 damage. Structural immediately jumps to 50%. Fire on the Thor. That was actually a pretty low end hit. Considering it only did about 150. So you can consider yourself lucky. I can also consider myself lucky as all of these torpedo launchers could have been fired at my ships, but weren't. And those torpedoes can hit hard. They're 23 inch and there are a lot of them. Okay, that's the Thor gone. That's the Nysa now gone. Next target, York. Lion's target, Vidder. And the destroyer is going to be the target of the heavy cruisers. Because those 7-inch guns should be able to tackle that. Ooh. You have a problem, don't you, York? That was one hit, taking out 44% of your structural integrity. Knocking out almost the entirety of your bow section. By some virtue, all your guns are still alive. That's another hit. The destroyer is getting... Well, it's getting nibbled at by the heavy cruisers. There's another flooding hit. Just shooting heavy cruisers in a barrel at this point. 
There's not that much that these guys can do. York is done. I still have ammo. You know, in essence, I think I built a Thunderer from World of Warships. Right? That's... I think that's in essence what it is. Oh, we're still turning the battleship now. 18.6. That's probably not very penable with high explosive. V12 is done. Is that an actual light cruiser? If so, why haven't we seen it yet? Oh. <laughs> ah, there we go. We're done. Sunk 65% of the enemy fleet. So, do not oppose a Thunderer, because she will rain down Holy Thunder upon you from 18-inch guns. And she'll let you know that you're no longer welcome here, and that the British rule has been re-established. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found the information about the patch notes useful. Let me know your thoughts are down below in the comment section. And I'll see you soon for another video from Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts.